Our goal now is to connect probability theory to statistics. That is, we want to use the ideas for probability that we've studied in order to make conclusions from data. And to do this, we'll need the concept of a sampling distribution, which is the topic of this video. The goal of statistics is to make conclusions based on the incomplete or noisy information that we have in our data. The process of doing this is called statistical inference. Here's a model for statistical inference. We have our real world. This is the world we experience and where we make our measurements. And in our real world, we have our observed data. Underlying this is a theoretical world. This world explains how the real world works. It includes scientific and statistical models that describe the probability distributions for our random measurements. Observations of these random measurements are our data. The theoretical world could also be a population and our data could be measured on a sample from the population. And then the randomness in the data is due to the randomness in the sampling process. Either way, we have parameters in the theoretical world which are features of the models or features of the population in the theoretical world. We don't know the values of these parameters, but they are fixed. They are a feature of nature or of the population, and they are what they are, even if we don't know them. So they're not random. Inferential statistics is often about estimating parameters by some statistic which we calculate from our real world data. In real life, we only get one sample or set of data from which we calculate our statistic. But there are many values it could be, depending on the random measurements that give us our data. So our statistic is a random quantity. And in order to make inferences, or more general conclusions, based on the single sample or set of data that we get, we need to think about the behavior of all of the possible sample data sets that we could have gotten. We're going to talk now about the mean. It's often a goal to understand the typical or central value of measurements, so the mean is a common parameter that we'd like to make inferences about. We'll call our theoretical world mean the Greek letter mu, and we'll estimate it by the sample mean x bar. Now here's a possible real world situation. We observed nine data values, random measurements from a sample of size nine. And for these nine data values, we'll calculate the average, or sample mean, and this purple vertical bar is at the average. This average is a statistic calculated from our data. It's an example of an X bar, which we could use to estimate mu. Of course, if we had taken another random sample of data, we'd get a different value for X bar. And if we had taken yet another sample of data, we'd get yet another value for the average. And this purple probability distribution shows the behavior, in terms of the probability, of all of the different sample means that it's possible to get. In previous videos, we investigated how this probability distribution for the sample means compares to the probability distribution of the individual observations. Knowing the probability distribution of the sample means is an important component of the process of statistical inference. The probability distribution of the sample means is called a sampling distribution. In general, a sampling distribution is the probability distribution of the possible values of an estimator of a parameter. In the real world, in real life, we only observe one sample and get one sample mean. But if we make some assumptions about how the individual observations behave, that is, we make some assumptions about the probability distribution of the individual observations, then that tells us what the sampling distribution of the mean is. Suppose we assume that the individual observations have a normal distribution with a mean of mu and a standard deviation of sigma. Then the sampling distribution of the mean has a normal distribution, also with a mean of mu, and a standard deviation of sigma divided by the square root of n, where n is the size of our samples. 
It describes how the observed value of the sample mean varies from sample to sample of data. That variability is called sampling variability. In the case of the sampling distribution of the mean, the sampling variability is given by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, which is sigma divided by the square root of n. We can't be sure that individual observations behave like observations from a normal distribution. They could come from a uniform distribution or a skewed distribution or anything else. But as long as our sample size is large enough, we have the central limit theorem working for us. It tells us that the probability distribution of the means is approximately normal. You may be concerned that the sampling distribution is in terms of quantities that we don't actually observe. In particular, it's in terms of mu and sigma. Mu and sigma are properties of the probability distribution of the individual observations, and they exist in the theoretical world, so we don't know them. Now, how to deal with this will be left for future work in the development of methods for statistical inference. For now, the important concept is understanding what happens when a study is performed. We carry out our study, we get one set of data, and we calculate one sample mean. But the outcome of a single study can be considered as a random outcome from all of the possible studies that could have been carried out under the same conditions. And the sampling distribution of the mean tells us how likely the various sample means that we could get in these possible studies are. The other situation that we've considered is a proportion. When estimating a proportion, each individual observation is a Bernoulli random variable. It comes up one of two ways, heads or tails, or success or failure, or perhaps Liberal Party supporter or not. For a Bernoulli random variable, we have the parameter p, and p is the probability that our random variable comes up as success. We estimate p with p hat, the proportion of times we get a success in our sample of size n. And again, even though in practice we only get one sample, so we only ever observe one value of p hat, we know that the value of p hat would vary from sample to sample, and for large n, we know that its distribution is approximately normal, and this normal distribution has mean p, and standard deviation equal to the square root of p times 1 minus p over n. And this is a sampling distribution of a sample proportion, the sampling distribution of p hat. Like we saw for the mean, the sampling distribution for p hat is in terms of something we don't observe. In this case, that's the parameter p. p exists in the theoretical world and it describes the behavior of our individual observations. But later when we develop these ideas into statistical methods, one thing we'll discuss is how to deal with the fact that we don't know p. In fact, it's what we're trying to estimate. The type of reasoning that we've seen in this video allows us to develop statistical methods for many parameters. We start with a presumed probability distribution for the individual observations, and then we can mathematically derive a probability distribution for an estimator of the parameters. That would be a sampling distribution. We've seen how to do this for proportions and for means, but the same type of reasoning applies to other quantities. Perhaps we'd like to estimate a standard deviation, or maybe the slope of a line of best fit. We just need to know how these statistics behave, that is, their sampling distributions, in order to be able to make general conclusions based on just one sample of data.